In the theatre of human existence, one enigma has transcended time, captivating the curious minds of civilizations across the ages. The age-old question. What happens after we draw our final breath? From the sun-kissed banks of the Nile to the vibrant landscape of Mexico. We will delve into different civilizations and their beliefs. Beliefs that shape societies, influence rituals, and define the essence of existence. Our first quest for answers takes us to the land of the Great Pyramids, Egypt. The ancient Egyptians forged a profound relationship with the great mysteries of existence, none more captivating than the enigma of death. For these remarkable people, Death was not an end, but a gateway to an intricate afterlife. Egyptians upon death embraced a unique and elaborate practice that transcended the boundaries of mortality, mummification. This intricate process, reserved for both the elite and common citizens, sought to safeguard not only the physical form, but more importantly, the eternal essence of the departed. Mummification was a meticulous and revered art, steeped in religious significance and guided by a profound belief in the afterlife. According to Egyptian belief, the soul needed a recognisable and intact physical form to navigate the challenges of the underworld. After mummification, the soul embarked on its journey through the Duat, governed by Osiris the god of the afterlife and rebirth. The duat comprised various realms, each presenting unique challenges and obstacles. These could include gates guarded by ferocious serpents, lakes of fire, or caverns inhabited by malevolent entities. The deceased had to navigate these realms successfully to progress. During the dead's journey through the duat, the Hall of Ma'at emerges. This ethereal hall becomes the stage for the profound judgment of the dead, an intricate ceremony determining the worthiness of souls for the afterlife. Arrayed along the celestial chamber are the 42 judges, the assessors of Ma'at, each embodying a moral and ethical principle. The deceased, having successfully navigated the challenges of the Duat, stands before this illustrious tribunal to undergo the meticulous scrutiny of their life's deeds. This declaration, a litany of moral affirmations, becomes the soul's plea for a favourable judgment. At the heart of this celestial courtroom stands Mahat, the goddess personifying truth, justice and cosmic order. Her feather, representing the embodiment of harmonious existence, becomes the fulcrum upon which the destinies of the deceased teeter. The scale, an emblem of divine justice, holds the delicate equilibrium between the feather of Maat and the heart of the departed. As the soul approaches the scales, a moment of cosmic significance unfolds, the weighing of the heart. The heart, regarded as the seat of one's actions and moral essence, is carefully placed on one side of the scale, while the feather of Mat graces the other. The celestial scales, indifferent to worldly wealth or social standing, measure the purity of the soul against the divine standard. As the soul traverses the complex tapestry of the Duat, it eventually stands before Osiris for the final judgment a moment of reckoning that shapes the destiny of the departed. Osiris, the venerable god of the afterlife and rebirth, scrutinizes the soul's journey through the duat, taking into account the intricacies of the negative confession and the outcome of the cosmic scales. The judgment rendered by Osiris reflects not only the deeds of the departed, but the very essence of their soul. If the individual is found worthy, having upheld the principles of Maat, Osiris ushers them toward Aru. Aru, 
in ancient Egyptian mythology is a paradisiacal realm associated with the afterlife, a celestial counterpart to the earthly existence. This idyllic abode is often envisioned as a lush and fertile oasis, reflecting the Egyptian concept of paradise. The name Aru translates to reeds or reed fields, underlining its serene landscape. This heavenly realm is believed to be a place of eternal bliss, where the blessed souls enjoy an existence free from hardship. If Osiris withheld entry, it signalled that the individual's life had been marked by wrongdoing and moral imbalance. The denied soul faced an ominous fate, often depicted in the form of Amit, the devourer. Amit, with its composite features of a crocodile, leopard and hippopotamus, was believed to consume the hearts of the unworthy. This act of consumption resulted in a form of spiritual annihilation, a stark contrast to the blissful afterlife promised in Aru. The beliefs and rituals surrounding death and the afterlife in ancient Egypt reflects the profound significance the Egyptians placed on ensuring a prosperous and eternal existence for their departed loved ones. A truly captivating story from an intriguing ancient civilization. Next, we explore a civilization nestled along the azure shores of the Mediterranean, where humanity bore witness to the birth of democracy, philosophy, and the arts. Ancient Greece. The intricate tapestry of Greek mythology weaves together a captivating narrative of the journey beyond life, presided over by gods and goddesses who shape the destinies of the deceased. At the moment of death, it was believed that the soul, the essence of an individual's being, would separate from the physical body. This departure was often associated with the guidance of Hermes. Hermes was a prominent deity in ancient Greek mythology, often recognised as the messenger of the gods, the god of commerce, and the guide of souls to the underworld. He was one of the twelve Olympian gods, residing on Mount Olympus, and was known for his versatility, cunning and swift nature. Under Hermes' watchful eye, the deceased would arrive at the River Styx, the boundary between the living and the underworld known as the realm of Hades. It was said to encircle the underworld seven times, creating an impassable and foreboding divide. Mortals and immortals alike regarded the Styx as a formidable obstacle with its crossing signifying a profound transition and a commitment to the otherworldly journey. To traverse the great river, the departed souls were believed to enlist the services of Charon, the infamous ferryman of the dead. Charon's duty was to guide souls across the Styx, to the mysterious underworld, but not without a toll. In accordance with Greek burial customs, the deceased were laid to rest with a small coin, an obolus, to pay Charon for safe passage. Those who failed to provide the required fare were condemned to wander the shores of the Styx, denied access to the afterlife. After leaving Charon's ferry, the deceased souls embark on the next stage of their mythic journey, finding themselves at the formidable gates of the realm of Hades. Guarded by Cerberus, a colossal hound with three ferocious heads. His eyes gleam with an otherworldly intensity, and each head bears sharp teeth, ready to ward off any intruders attempting to breach the boundary between the living and the dead. He also ensured souls departing from Charon's ferry remain within the realm of the dead. Once the deceased enter the gates to the underworld, they are under the watchful eyes of Hades for eternity. In the tumultuous dawn of Greek mythology, when the cosmos itself seemed to take its first breath, the mighty gods gathered to decide the fate of the universe. With a grandeur befitting their divine stature, Zeus, Hades and Poseidon emerged 
as the gods entrusted with the dominion over the realms of sky, underworld and sea. Zeus, the thunder-wielding king of the gods, ascended to the celestial heights, claiming dominion over the vast expanse of the sky. Poseidon, with a trident that could stir the mightiest tempests and calm the fiercest waves, claimed lordship over the boundless oceans. And Hades, who descended to the depths beneath the earth, where shadows danced in perpetual twilight. The underworld. The underworld became Hades' solemn realm. Here, the god of the dead presided over the souls of mortals, ensuring that the departed found their rightful place among the echelons of the afterlife. As souls navigate the intricacies of the Greek underworld, a pivotal moment awaits them. Judgment from the three judges of the dead. Rhadamanthus, Minos and Iacus. This divine trio assumes the profound responsibility of assessing the deeds of the departed and determining the fate that awaits them in the afterlife. Within Hades, three distinct afterlife realms await the judged souls each carrying its own unique essence and significance. Elysium, Tartarus and the Asphodel Meadows represent the complex tapestry of rewards, punishments and neutrality that weave through the Greek underworld. Elysium, often described as the paradisiacal haven of the virtuous and heroic souls, stands as a realm bathed in eternal bliss. The sun here always shines, casting a warm and golden glow over the idyllic landscapes. Heroes, poets, and those who led lives of exceptional virtue find solace in Elysium. It is a place where the spirit of the noble and valiant can revel in perpetual peace, away from the tribulations of the mortal world. In stark contrast to the serene beauty of Elysium, Tartarus represents the abyss of torment, reserved for the most wretched and condemned souls. Those judged unworthy and deserving of punishment find themselves plunged into the depths of Tartarus, where eternal suffering becomes their fate. The landscape of Tartarus is characterised by its desolation and darkness, a place where the condemned endure the consequences of their earthly misdeeds. Between the extremes of Elysium and Tartarus lies the Asphodel Meadows, a realm of neutrality and mundanity. Souls whose deeds do not warrant the extremes of reward or punishment find themselves in this enigmatic and somewhat ordinary region of the underworld. The Asphodel Meadows are often depicted as a vast expanse of plains adorned with the unassuming Asphodel flowers. It is here that ordinary shades of the departed exist, their memories gradually fading away. The Asphodel Meadows represent a kind of purgatorial state where souls lead an existence that lacks the heightened experiences of both Elysium and Tartarus. The ancient Greek's journey to the underworld is not merely a mythic odyssey. It is a profound exploration of the human condition, morality, and the timeless quest for equilibrium in the cosmic order. The river Styx, the three judges, and the realms of Hades serve as metaphors for the existential journey each soul undertakes, transcending the mortal realm and venturing into the mysteries of eternity. Our next look back in time takes us to a part of Earth steeped in mystery and adorned with the vibrant hues of a rich cultural tapestry Mesoamerica, home to the Aztec civilization. In the intricate tapestry of Aztec cosmology, the journey beyond mortal existence is a captivating odyssey woven with myth, symbolism, and a profound connection to the circumstances of one's demise. The afterlife is not a monolithic destination. It's a mosaic of realms, each uniquely influenced by the circumstances of death. For the most ordinary of deaths, such as old age or illness, Mictlan awaits. Embarking on the journey to the mysterious Mictlan, 
often referred to as the place of darkness, mark the destiny of many Aztecs. Mictlan, the underworld of the Nahua people, also known as the Aztec, is a shadowy domain ruled by its sovereigns, Lord Mictlantecuhtli and Lady Mictlansihuatl. This gloomy afterlife destination could only be reached by the departed after a meandering four-year sojourn beneath the earth. This pilgrimage starts with the encounter of Apanahuaya, a formidable river wide and gushing, too intimidating for the deceased to swim across. To conquer this obstacle, the departed soul is accompanied by a unique guide, an Itzkuintli, a special dog customarily cremated with the corpse. The loyal canine serves as a companion, helping the soul navigate the treacherous waters and embark on the subsequent stages of the journey. The soul then navigates between clashing mountains known as Tepetl Monomiclia, a symbolic pass where the fear of these mountains colliding and crushing the traveller looms large. The deceased then climb the merciless hill of flint, where razor-like stones cut the skin. The soul then faces Kelhuacayan, eight mountains perpetually covered in snow. The cutting winds and the freezing environment represent the harsh conditions of the afterlife. Panikatakoyan presents the next challenge, an expanse of cold and large moorlands where the dead must walk endlessly. The journey continues through Tamiminaloyan, a long path where the soul is struck with arrows fired by unseen hands. The soul then arrives at Tekoilanaloyan, a place inhabited by thousands of fierce beasts. In the face of these creatures, the passers-by must open their chests, allowing the beasts to eat their hearts. After confronting fierce beasts, the dead are forced to dive into Apanuyayo, where the water is black and the lizard called Xochilonol resides. Finally, they had to traverse nine rivers along a mist-shrouded and darkened pathway known as Izmictlan Apotkalolka. In this realm, the sun remained perpetually absent, casting an unyielding shadow over the challenging journey. Eventually, weary, wounded and drained from the trials, they would arrive at their ultimate destination, Chikunamictlan. Here, they would encounter Mictlantecuhtli, the formidable god of death, who awaited them with a sense of retribution. In this realm, the perpetual cycle would find its conclusion, and here they would reside until their bodies and lives faded away. From a sanctuary reserved for Aztec elders to a celestial paradise tailored for the young, our next exploration into the realms of the Aztec afterlife brings us to the enchanting domain of Chichihuacoco, the paradise orchard of the gods. Chichihuacoco stands as the inaugural mansion in the Aztec afterlife, reserved for a select group, the children who departed this earthly realm prematurely. Picture a paradise where the laughter of children intertwines with the rustling leaves of a sacred tree, the central feature of this celestial realm. Its branches drip with a celestial milk, a nourishing elixir that sustains the departed children. The imagery is nothing short of enchanting, symbolising the eternal cycle of life and rebirth. The children residing in Chichihuacuoco carry a profound purpose. They are chosen to repopulate the earth in a future era, ensuring the continuity of life when the fifth sun world faces its inevitable end. Ilhuicatl Tonatiu, or the Kingdom of the Sun, emerges as the next mansion of the dead, beckoning the souls of those who met their fate as warriors on the battlefield and women who perished in the noble act of childbirth. The sun becomes both a symbolic and literal source of life within this kingdom. Ilhuicato Tonatiu is envisioned as an eternal plain, bathed in the golden hues of sunlight. 
Here, the souls of departed warriors transform into rich bird feathers, embodying the vibrant essence of life beyond the earthly realm. Among these celestial creatures are the revered hummingbirds. The hummingbirds hold a special place of honour, recognised as the souls of warriors who met their end in battle. The final realm, Tlalocan, occupies a distinct position in the pantheon of the Aztec afterlife. It stands as a refuge for those who in life were touched by the elements, be they victims of drowning or individuals struck by the potent force of lightning. This celestial abode intertwines with the intricate web of Aztec mythology. At the heart of Tlalocan resides Tlaloc, the god of rain, fertility and water. Revered for his role in sustaining agricultural abundance, Tlaloc becomes the guardian of those whose lives are claimed by water-related events. In Tlalocan, the departed souls revel in a state of perpetual joy and abundance. The benevolent nature of Tlaloc extends to those who found their final repose in this celestial haven, promising a life free from sorrow and enriched by the constant blessings of the God of Rain. The Aztecs' beliefs are truly captivating. The thought of four years of hardship to fade away in perpetual darkness must tempt the Aztecs to die heroically in order to rest in a favourable realm. The ancient Egyptians, Greeks and Aztecs all used the afterlife to shape the way society behaved here on Earth. Their tales woven with myths and enchantment have withstood the test of time.